Cardinals have rebounded nicely against the San Diego Padres after a disappointing opening series against Los Angeles Dodgers. They are looking for the sweep right now, but it's not going super well in game three. We'll talk all about the Padres series in the upcoming home opener against the Marlins on this episode, the hundredth episode of Dealing the Cards. You got a little nice uh, sandy drink of water during the intro there or something. But we are at hundredth episode of Dealing the Cards. Technically like third episode of Dealing the Cards, but this is, you know, formerly known as Newt News. Uh, excited because the card a lot better right now even though today's game has been a little bit eh, you know not the best so far um so andrew's gonna be making sure giving live updates during this if you're watching with us as well um maybe hit the passing button andrew so people can know actually i'll hit it as we go through so people know if we're giving the game game up hear this something happened could be good could be bad who knows um but yeah we wanted to talk about the padre series because obviously it's been a bit of a heel turn since what or what we saw in la I think the three of us definitely thought it would look at least better, but we doesn't mean they were going to win two games, two out of three, or potentially three if they can come back here. Um, and then now they have a series against the 0-7 Miami Marlins this weekend, so things could look a lot different by the time next time we record compared to what the Dodgers series is. But just right off the top, like Andrew, Sandy, how are you guys feeling about the team right now? We don't need to go too much into depth because obviously we'll talk about different things, but like compared to last time we talked, how are you feeling about the Cardinals? I feel a lot better. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I prepared myself that the Dodgers were going to be good. I looked at them all offseason and I was like, oh, they signed all these guys. It's going to be really tough. And I told myself that all offseason. And then right as soon as the season started, I um, I overreacted right away. And I was like, oh, this team is terrible. But um, clearly they're not as bad as we thought um, they were. They're playing a lot better than they were last year at this point when they got swept by the Braves um, and just not taking any – competitive like at bats the the pitching was terrible but like lynn and gibson they weren't that bad they they looked pretty good lynn especially against the dodgers um got pulled early due to rain had a pretty shaky start and then he rebounded really quick and i don't know if he just got lucky we'll see what happens tomorrow against the marlins but um he looked a lot better than i thought he was going to be and kyle gibson gave us a really nice quality start as brandon crawford strikes out yet again um, so that's fun. We'll talk about that um, later. Uh, I think Sandy's not too happy that he's getting playing time, but um, yeah, no, a lot better. Uh, Sandy, how about as you answer that, we'll go into our first segment as well, so you can give uh, your takes on this. But uh, well, how are you feeling about the Cardinals right now? And then out of the position player group, who do you think's like on a heater right now? Who's impressed you the most at the plate? Yeah, so how do I feel about the Cardinals? Obviously a lot better. This is just how the Cardinals look against normal teams, right? I think it's okay at this point to to say the Dodgers aren't a normal organization. They just spent like $1.4 billion this offseason. Other teams don't have that luxury. Uh, the Padres didn't just bring in a bunch of the best players in the world. And this is how the Cardinals look against like some mediocre pitchers. And then a good pitcher in you, Darvish, who we were still able to score off of consistently. Uh, which I really liked. And then honestly, the Padres are supposed to have a pretty decent bullpen, um, but the Cardinals have kind of gotten into it the last couple nights, which has been really nice. They've had a lot of chances. Uh, it's a little frustrating. They've had chances to break these games open. They haven't done so, but for the most part, you know, really couldn't be happier with the team, especially the last two games. Uh, who's who's on a heater though? Brennan Donovan has been the most impressive to me in the early going so far. The numbers support that, but also he just feels the most competitive at the plate um hasn't hasn't really given anybody an easy uh time on the mound yet he looked great today uh after getting hit by a pitch it was our second base runner as well with that single so very happy with what i've seen from him a little bit of power too he's hitting the ball hard yeah can't can't complain about donovan love to see him getting time in the outfield too uh i prefer that defensive alignment to be honest over putting a guy yeah. like burleson out there so all good things yeah, I, uh, I'll i go with mine next, and Andrew, I'd love to hear you've been impressed by. And we don't always have to pick who the best hitter is right now, but definitely just trends and signs. Brent, uh, Brendan, I almost said Brandon Crawford, definitely not on heater. No. <laughs> Brendan Donovan has impressed me a ton. And since you went with him, I don't think I would have – I, I was going to go with Wilson Contreras. I just have to because he just is – I know he only had – well, I guess he got a hit today, so he has he had the double today. a year now. So, yeah. so, But three of his four hits have been extra base hits, a double and two home runs. Uh, he just looks awesome at the play right now. I think going into today, he had like a 140 WRC plus or something like that. 
Um, I might be wrong. I thought Brandon Kylie said that today, but uh, but yeah, he looks really good. And then obviously this is not um, offense, but I'll count it as part of it because we're not going to talk defensively about people who impressed us, but he's uh, led the league in strikes called um, percentage from pitches in the what we call the dark zone, which is like the areas outside that are more like it's it's hit or miss if it's called ball or strike and he's getting the most calls in the league right now behind the plate and you see ivan herrera today or yvon herrera today and he has not looked super great especially throwing out runners so it makes yeah. you appreciate wilson Contreras a little bit more um but yeah i've been really impressed by wilson he's batting third today and that's probably where he needs to be for the foreseeable future until gorman gets it going and even then if Contreras is hitting like this uh, tough to take him out of that spot right now uh so wilson's definitely impressed me from the play andrew who's been impressing you i mean you guys took the only two guys in today's lineup with an ops over 500 aside from paul goldschmidt <laughs> who we already talked about in the opening series recap so it's not going to be him um that's all a holdover from from the first game of the season where he was like three for four with the home run so i'll talk about victor scott his numbers aren't there yet um but he's hitting the ball pretty hard and yesterday that that hustle double that should not have been a double where like anybody else um on any other team um just running on tatis like with no care in the world was really impressive um i've just been impressed by the at bats he's taking. I really hope that when Lars Newbar comes up, he's not the one that gets sent down. I don't think he will be, um, but I'm just really excited to see what he can keep doing. He looks competitive at the plate. The results haven't been there so far, um, but I'm really liking what I'm seeing out of Victor Scott. Yeah, he definitely has looked like obviously the results aren't totally there, but he's hitting the ball pretty hard at times i would say he does look at least a little bit overmatched at times he's had some at bats where have been like ah i don't know. i don't know if he's totally ready yet from the plate but obviously the speed and defense it's just so good that it's hard not to have him in the lineup every single day and he's been making impacts and pretty much every time he gets on base he does something um he scored a lot of the runs i think the first two or three games of the series he or he'd scored almost at 75% of the time he was on base, something like that. I think it was the the Dodgers series. So like that's that's really significant. And it's given yeah. the lineup a different look where they can play small ball now. They can manufacture runs in a way that they haven't in the past. So that's important. But also at the same time, something that definitely looks a little bit different. Andrew, I want to go to you again here, is who's dealing right now? If we talked about this in 2023, we'd be like, hmm, who is? Because there's probably only one answer. But there's actually a decent amount of guys who look pretty good right now in the rotation and the bullpen. So, Andrew, out of the, like, the starting pitcher's bullpen, who's impressing you the most right now? Yeah, I think um, Kyle Gibson is, is probably the guy that I'll go with. I feel like Lance Lynn got a little bit lucky in, in that outing. Um, I feel like the Dodgers probably should have tagged him for one or two <laughs> runs. Um, had, had some pretty good sequencing there. Um, but Kyle Gibson, just all around good start. Um, what was it, seven innings he went? That's That was refreshing. Um, and we got our first quality start before, um, before like the, the middle of April, which is great. I, I remember last season we were like, oh, when are we going to ever get a quality start? It just wouldn't happen. And we got two in a row right away. Um, and I feel like um, a couple home runs, a couple hard hit balls from some of the Padres hitters, but that's what you're going to get out of him. It's kind of expected, but like he gave the, the team a chance to win. The team gave him a lead right out right out of the gate. So um, this is just good stuff all around from Kyle Gibson. Um, and that's what he does. He gives your team a chance to win. Um, not a lot of really bad starts last year. I think he had like 16 wins for the Orioles, even though his ERA was in the five. So um, that's just the kind of kind of player that he is with with an offense that that'll give you a lot of runs. Yeah, but I also, I think I, I put out a tweet a couple of days ago, or it was, yeah, it was during the Gibson start, so two days ago, um, that his, for the most part, his starts are actually pretty good. He Like most of the time, he gives you at least an average start. A lot of those end up being good to great starts, and then he has a few really bad outings. So like that's the part of our ERA that I think you sometimes have to go dive into the weeds. And I had a lot of people responding to me that like, I recognize their Twitter handles of people who have been like super anti the Cardinals rotation. And then they were like responding and be like, Oh, like, so Gibson actually is mostly decent and he has the few, a few bad starts in between, but like, that's what you expect from a four or five starter. But if he's giving you on average six innings, three earned runs, four earned runs, like this offense can win with that. And he goes seven, eight innings sometimes with one or two earned runs. 
occasionally he does the four or innings with six earned runs, but that's few and far between usually for him. So I've been really impressed by Kyle Gibson too. Um, Sandy, who's been impressing you the most? Well, one more thing to add to the Kyle Gibson discussion real quick. Um, even his worst outings aren't like the true blow up outings that the Cardinals have dealt with the last few yeah. seasons, especially last year where you'd have a guy like Dakota Hudson who literally might go two innings and give up nine runs or Ponce de Leon yep. in years previous. Like I remember one time I show up to the ballpark, Ponce de Leon's pitching. The Cardinals are down nine to one in the second inning. Why am I even here? I was late to the game and I missed the entire game. It was already over by the time I arrived. Um, yeah. Even his worst outings, like, like, I was looking through and I think the worst outing I could find, he went seven innings and allowed six runs, which like, okay, you're, you're not loving that, but you're probably still semi in the game as long as you scored a couple. Yeah. Um, so it's really not the end of the world, but who do I think is Can dealing? Um, to that? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, just to give like a, to a different perspective of the Cardinals four or five starters last year, Wainwright, Libertor, Hudson, Woodford, and Rom combined for 60 starts last year. Wainwright had a 7.4 ERA in 21 starts, averaged four and two thirds innings. So in four and oh. two thirds innings with a seven ERA, Libertor averaged four and a third innings with 5.88 ERA. Dakota Hudson averaged five and a third innings with a 5.26 ERA. Jake Woodford had a 6.95 ERA, averaging four innings per start. Oh. And Drew Rahm averaged four innings per start with an eight ERA. So like oh. it's like they had obnoxiously high ERAs and were only giving you three or four, maybe five innings. Gibson and Lynn have like ERAs in about the fours and give you yeah. six to seven to eight innings. That's a big difference. So just the just to add to Huge your point difference. there, Sandy. Yeah, I saw something, and uh, through the first week of the season, only three pitchers have gone seven innings or more, and Gibson's one of them. So that's pretty good stuff. It's, it's good company to be it's in. Good to be. Um, but I guess to, to turn the conversation, Lynn's also dealing. Uh, he had a great first start, and if not for the rain delay, um, I think you might have seen him go into the, fi the fifth or the sixth. So very, very happy with that. And then, you know, got to talk about Michaelis last night as well. Gave the cards a quality yeah. start. So I think you can just group all three of them together. Uh, Lynn Gibson and Michaelis call them the innings eaters and say all three of them are off to good starts. Couldn't be happier. Yeah, it's working. Innings come at a premium this year. And if the Cardinals have three guys that can soak up a lot of them and do it pretty well, um, something I'll be happy with. I've been pleasantly, well, like not pleasantly surprised. Even. I've been shocked at the amount of people on Twitter who have been like, Oh, Kyle Gibson might actually be pretty good. I thought immediately they'd all be like, it's one start, calm down. But there are some people again that I recognize that all offseason were like super mad about it that were like starting to like try to defend Kyle Gibson. I was like, what is happening? I feel like it's great. Everyone tells me I drink most water all the time. And barely everyone, a lot of other people are now too. So um, I'll agree the rotations look a lot better, but I'll go with Andrew Kittredge. I've been really impressed with him so far. I don't think mm, he's getting on the so far. And he really fills that like fireman role that the and we'll talk more about Helsley, I'm sure at some point, but they really want to keep Helsley in the ninth inning right now to make sure he knows every single time he doesn't have to like randomly get up in the seventh inning to come into a game. Maybe that helps him pitch in more games, knowing that he's only going to come in in the ninth. Do I necessarily agree with that? Probably not. I think that's kind of, that's kind of frustrating, but when your whole bullpen's healthy and you have Kittredge, Jojo, Geo, and Middleton, Right, O'Brien. Like right now, they're they're hurting, so they don't have as many of those top arms available. And the the first few games of the series, the rotation wasn't eating enough innings, so a lot of them were unavailable. But a lot of nights, if you have a lot of those guys available, like Kittredge can come in the seventh inning against the heart of the order with a man on second and shut it down. And that's huge because that could be the defining mark of the game. And so that's something we've talked about. Is this bullpen last year? It felt like you only had one or two relievers you could trust at any time. The bullpen results haven't been great so far, but I don't like when JoJo comes in, when Kittredge comes in, when Geo comes in, when Helsley comes in, I feel pretty good. And once you get Middleton and Riley O'Brien back, Pilantes look pretty good. I, I really like this bullpen right now. I think Andrew Kittredge has been a big part of that. And so I'm excited to continue to see him pitch for them. And again, that fireman role, the guy that he doesn't care what inning he comes in. If he, if he has to come in the fourth inning, he'll do it. He's pitched in every major league inning. That's something Ollie talked about this offseason, or maybe Mosaic did. Like, He's one of the few relievers that's pitched in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth innings because he's pitched for the Rays, so he'd be an opener, sometimes he'd be a closer. So I like his flexibility a lot, and I think it will help the team. But <clears throat> obviously we can talk anything Padres series as we're going through, but <laughs> I think all three of us have been, and Twitter have been uh, not – Super uh, loving Ollie's moves thus far. 
Um, and this is coming from someone that gen- generally really likes Ollie. And so, um, yeah, I've been tough at times. I, sometimes the segment, we're all three going to agree on the same point. But I think this one, we could probably go like round robin and like have a draft of like six different things that we have not liked. But Sandy, I'll let you roll first. What what is okay? This is the segment. No one to fold them. Ollie, you you needed to not. This is not it. Sandy, when did Ollie need to know when to fold them this weekend for you or this week for you? Dude, Ollie made some terrible, <laughs> some terrible decisions in LA. For the most part, the bullpen management, which is what Twitter seems to be complaining about, has been all right. But the lineup decisions are just pissing me off at this point. For some reason, it won't let me post any more comments, uh, but I was saying that I plan on destroying Ali in this next segment, and it's true. Like, Ali Marmol, make a good decision challenge, impossible level. Because lately, especially like today, it's just been awful. What is Brandon Crawford doing in the lineup? I know about the fact that he has, like, good numbers against Musgrove. I don't care. Brandon Crawford is not on this team to produce offensively. He's here to be, like, the backup, backup player. Why is he here? Why is Wynn getting a scheduled off day this early in the season? Why is Walker getting a scheduled off day? What are we doing? Why are you sending Arenado to second? Like, it's just all up and down, terrible decision making. And honestly, like, in the past, I've wondered whether this is something that the front office does and they say, just go with the numbers, Ali. But he reaffirmed this offseason that he makes these calls and they're just bad. So I'll say line of construction is at the top of my list of things that are just bothering me. I know that there are guys that are hurt, but like Brandon Crawford does not need to be making his second start already. Literally no reason. And it already cost the cards a run today because Mason Wynn makes that play. I know that the Bogart single that was hit at what, like 65 miles an hour up the middle. I know Mason Wynn makes that play, throws him out at first, the innings over. So yeah, I'll I'll say specifically lineup construction. It's just terrible. Yeah. You kind of stole both of our, um, I know I'm so sorry. So So I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but um, I'll, I'll go specifically like, you know, the Cardinals won this game on Saturday, but they did a They like the process was just completely wrong. Um, we'll go through the lineup. I believe Matt Carpenter was batting fifth. Um, <laughs> what are we doing? It was just like Brandon Crawford was in the game. It was the third game of the season and we're giving Mason win a scheduled off day. I'm OK with giving giving him um Crawford the start over him today because he really does have good numbers against Musgrove. But like the, the start on Saturday just didn't make any sense. Like these guys are, are 21, 22, 23 years old, and you're giving them scheduled off days, what, three games into the season? That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, it was just not a good lineup. And to go up against Yamamoto, who really needed a good start, and he got a good start. The Cardinals just got kind of lucky against the Dodgers bullpen. Like there was there was a balk, um, some like interference nonsense going on. Like the, that r- inning where they scored a bunch of runs, it wasn't really a lot of good contact, a lot of good at bats. They kind of just lucked their way into into some some runs as Victor Scott gets hit by a pitch. Where I hope he's okay. That's not great. Um, okay. Um, yeah, but like. It's like sometimes when you're playing poker, you get a terrible hand. And this happens when I play poker with my friends. It's really frustrating. But, like, they'll bet on a horrible hand, and they'll get all the cars they need on the river, right? Like, I tweeted this out the other day. And it's, like, the most frustrating thing because, like, they should not have bet anything on those two cars that they got. But, like, it worked out for them. And that's, that's kind of how I see the game on Saturday. A lot of things went right for the Cardinals. A lot of things went right um and ollie didn't have to answer the tough questions of hey why didn't you pinch hit or pinch run in this situation um actually he did have to do that but fortunately shohei otani is still a little bit um acclimated to the dodgers and 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 popped out in that huge moment but like if he had like gotten a base hit even like hit a single then like this would be just terrible right like we lose that game we get swept by the dodgers which i mean is kind of expected when you go in there, but like to, to give up a win like that just doesn't make any sense. And Ollie did everything he could. I feel like to try to do that. He was like, it's, it's the second, a third game of the season. I'm not going to use these guys off the bench, but like when the game's on the line against the Dodgers, you put Wilson Contreras in, right? You put Mason win in the game as a defensive replacement. 
these guys can handle it. They're professional baseball players. They're not going, they're not going to get hurt or anything because you put them in for two innings at the end of the game. That's just not how this goes. Unless you're Tyler O'Neill. <laughs> Unless you're Tyler O'Neill. What a way to end it. Um, when you're talking about this, it reminded me of Brandon and Kylie who had this Im- image and I thought it was interesting of like Matheny. It's like when Mike Matheny was around the team, especially when he first started was so good that whenever he made these terrible decisions and terrible lineups and was pulling guys early, putting guys in weird spots, they were so good. It didn't matter. But like you notice it now when you're not as good last year. So last year, like you could really notice it because the team was bad and you didn't really have options. But like this year, it's like, well, I guess you won the game where Matt Carpenter played, but like, should he have been? And those hits are pretty lucky, all that. Um, <clears throat> I'll go to the Noel to fold them. The know when to fold them is Nolan Arenado, uh, stealing and Brendan Donovan hit and run. Like, those were really weird to me, and I didn't really understand it. I know that, like, technically Nato is safe there, but they called him out in a review and they didn't get it. But I, it just seems really dumb to do that there. And especially the Brendan Donovan one, like I know you're trying to stay out of a double play. So I, I get that part, but you have Wilson Contreras on deck who is so hot right now. Why would you do that? I don't know. That's been a weird one. And also the bunting in general, like Mason Wynn feels like he has to bunt all the time when Victor Scott gets on. And I just don't love that. It, and some of them have been kind of weird situations. Like he bunted the first base while his Victor Scott was stealing. And I'm like, why didn't you just have Victor Scott steal there when he would have clearly been safe and then bunt and then move him over the third rather than, I don't know. It's just some of this stuff has been a little bit weird to me, but they're overcoming it. And I also, I can't complain too much because we a lot of times talk about how they don't do enough small ball stuff. And then they like actually are doing it now. Um, so I just think the execution of it's been kind of weird and, not really loving what Ollie's done so far, but you know, it happens and um, it hasn't really cost them too much yet. I just think it's sometimes been the difference between big innings or small innings or killed some rallies. And I don't know. It, so they're, they're, they're doing fine right now. I obviously they're about to lose this game, to the Padres potentially. And so that, but you still won the series. Um, oh, wait, maybe not. You think they're going to win this game? There's, there's two on nobody out couple of hit oh, by okay. pitches though. I, yeah, my yeah. feed is cutting out right now so i couldn't see i heard that donnie got in the elbow is he okay yeah it looks like he's gonna stay yeah, in the game fine. they had the trainer out checking on okay. him though i was gonna be yeah, in I, guess, I, got it on the out. Wrong. I, I i have it on the passing button if something goes down you'll know about it so Uh-oh. what was that i said i got the oh. passing button here oh, okay. okay thank well, you i appreciate that okay so Let's shuffle the deck a little bit. Obviously, we've got the Miami Marlins coming up in three games over the weekend. So you have the Thursday home opener, off day Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Do we get the pitching matchups by chance up? I know it's tomorrow. The home opener yeah, tomorrow is Lance Lynn versus Ryan Weathers, which Andrew and I both Yeah, I saw there. that one. Um, what are the other matchups for the weekend? Um, so game two, they'll start Trevor Rogers against, I believe, Steven Matz. And then um, okay. Sunday... The Cardinals have a chance to win the Marcelo Zuna trade against Max Meyer. Oh. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Wait, uh, wait, Max Meyer. We're starting. Yeah. Why Max Meyer? Is that not the guy we gave up? No, we gave up no, Alcantara and Gallen and Castano and Magner Sierra. Oh. Goldschmidt, we just scored a run on an error, I think. This okay. is so chaotic. Oh, oh that's wait, fun. Not... Yeah, yeah, we did. Victor Scott. He's fast. Come on. Okay. Although they got the out. Oh, gosh. We'll take it. Oh, boy. We'll take it. Runners in scoring position for um, Contreras and Arenado. Okay. So, yeah. We'll see. Just so chaotic. Streaming during a game. Okay. So you, you do have this. So Marlon series, they're 0 and 7 as of recording. Really bad. I just want to make a funny joke or a quick take, even though uh, we should, we'll, we'll go to some of the injury stuff at some point here. But I'm telling you, there is a chance here where Cardinal fans had to bite the bullet hard because Ali Marmol in his first season made the playoffs and got swept out of the playoffs. And in his year two with the team, everyone critiqued the roster, but also said it was his fault. They were losing and they missed the playoffs and were really bad. Skip Schumacher in his first year with the Miami Marlins makes the playoffs wins manager of the year, which I think Ollie was top three this year. They're Oh, and seven, the roster looks bad. And there, it seems like they're going to be a team who totally misses the playoffs. And it's terrible. Are people going to call skip Schumacher a bad manager? If that happens. 
I mean, there's not enough Marlins Just fans saying. to even create that kind of narrative. So, <laughs> but I'm talking about Cardinals fans. Are they going to be like, oh, Skip Schumacher's <laughs> terrible because he had one good year, but then his second year they were awful? Just saying. Gosh, I sure hope I'm not. just the Marlins like, literally do not have an offense. The Marlins, yeah. <laughs> I know. They I'm not saying, but offense. they had this energy all last year. Seeing like, yeah. see, Skip Schumacher is clearly the better manager. They're making the playoffs. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So no, it's, I mean, um, getting yeah, the yeah. Pirates and the Angels in back-to-back series is a really bad look. Yeah, it is. And I'm not saying I'm not trying to say Skip Schumacher's a bad manager at all. I'm just saying when people are pointing to Ali saying he's bad. But they also were like, the pitching is so bad that this team is awful and the hitting won't work. It's like, okay, then how is manager supposed to fix that? Anyways, side the point. Um, Miami Marlins, Cardinals should like, is this, is anything less than a sweep okay? Like, is just winning the series good enough? They're not even starting their best guys. So, and that, that lineup has just looked so dead this entire week. And I mean, I kind of followed along, like I didn't watch any of the games, but I followed along because I wanted the Pirates to not win five in a row in that last game. And it just looked like they had no fight, even though the games were going into extra innings. And it's like, OK, um, and they're making the Angels look really good, which without Otani is bad for my narrative. But I don't think the Angels are good. So I, I don't know what's going on. This team seems lost. I really hope they don't find their groove. Like I I was kind of hoping they would win one or two of the games in, against the Angels because it was just like you don't want them to find their groove in St. Louis and like sweep the Cardinals or something. You don't want them to get hot at the right time because I feel like they're going to regress towards the mean at some point. They're not a they're not a zero win team. They're not going to be. They have to win their yeah. game at, a first game at some point. And I feel like probably going to end up happening um, when they're here. But I would like a sweep. It would be really nice. I think winning yeah. the series is is okay. Like I, honestly, yeah. I'm on, I'm probably never going to complain about not getting a sweep. Because yeah. you win the series, that's your job. Um, and if you win a bunch of series, you're going to the playoffs. That's just generally how it works. But with a team that looks as bad as the Marlins do right now, it's, I guess, like less okay than normal. And this is a series that uh, normally I would say I hope for two wins. I'm hoping for like two and a half wins here. And by that, I mean like the line instead of being, you know, it'd just be a little higher. So I yeah, think the Cardinals yeah. have a good chance to sweep. Um, I'm not going to be as thrilled about a sweep as i'd be normally and i'm not gonna i'm definitely not gonna be as happy with two or three as i'd normally be but i'm not gonna you know condemn the cardinals for losing one game to the miami marlins it's not the end of the yeah. world just win the series move on win the series against the phillies and then we're talking about a team that's officially off to a very good start yeah i agree with that like you can't fault a team for winning a series like maybe the dodgers can't afford to be swept by or they not sweep the marlins like maybe that for their fan base to be like what are we doing yeah. Oh, instead of Imagine winning the Dodgers podcast. games, they're going to win 114 games. Oh, no. Yeah. We all know Andrew's going to start a Dodgers podcast at some point. But imagine having one of those podcasts. You're like, we've only won nine of our last 10 games. What are we doing? Only six of our guys are in the MVP voting. Like, what a world. I would love to be. We only have six fan. all-stars instead of seven. Sorry, Sandy. <laughs> Dude, that soundbite's going to live in infinity series, forever. It will win the series and then hoping for a sweep. And that would be huge, um, especially if they don't win this game against the Padres. Like, um, I think if they wait, ah, shoot, what would their record? So they would be three and four today if they lose, right? Yeah. And then if they win the series, they're so, back to 500, five and five. Okay. Wait, no, four or three. And wait, so if they win the series, they'd be four and three, right? They'd be oh, no, no. If they win today, they'll be four and three. If right. they yeah, win, and if they lose, if they they'll lose today. Four and win the Marlins series. They'll so we'll be back to 500 to face the Phillies. Yes, yes, yeah. <clears throat> so hopefully, I mean, it'd be really nice to be above 500 uh, facing off the Phillies. Um, again, I we talked a lot about how this could be a really difficult start to the season, and the fact that they're at 500 or maybe even going to be above 500 after the first week would be huge. Um, I also think, too, it's important to recognize that last year, like if they end up being... 500 or two games below 500 at the end of the month that is completely different than when they started off the season 10 and 24 that yeah. that is just that it's unrecoverable you can recover oh no 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 Arnaldo just grinded to an inning ending double play and now the cardinals are probably going to lose so that's fine no no not nice hey you still have the ninth inning we'll see we'll see <sighs> okay. Also, okay. Let, let's just do the Nolan Arenado conversation. Are you guys? Uh, are you guys concerned? 
Yeah, Andrew, I'm officially concerned. concerned. It's, a, it's, a real thing. it's a real thing. Nolan Arenado is now on the longest streak of his career without a home run. He hasn't hit a home run since last August. Um, nice. He looks like he's hitting for zero power. It, it just looks bad. It's been over 30 games. Uh, he's not lifting the ball. He's like He's got this pull-heavy approach, but he's not pulling the ball either. Um, it, it just all looks bad. Even the hits that he's getting right now, like the RBI single he had today, that, that shouldn't have dropped. Like that's just kind of a dumb luck hit. So yeah, it's a real thing. I'm definitely concerned. There's not a big enough sample size to see how the defense looks, but if the defense is as bad as it was last year too, the Cardinals should be really worried about who Nolan Arenado is going to be for the, you know, the second half of this deal, because they've got him on the extension, the Rockies signed him to, and that's a big money extension. He's here for a yeah. long time. He needs to continue being a franchise cornerstone and it's just not trending that direction right now. Uh, one more thing I saw. Nolan Arenado's only gone without a home run for 20 games twice or three times in his career. And uh, two of those have come since the beginning of last season. So serious power outages. We should be worried. What would you put like scale one to 10? One, not worried at all. 10 freaking out. This is, this is the worst thing ever. Like a six. This, mm, and okay. I would have said when people were talking about it last April, I would have said like a one or a two, but it's a real concern right now. And like the power outage, if it doesn't end soon, you're going to have me being even more worried. Okay. Andrew, what about you? Yeah, I think it's around a six as well. Um, everyone was talking this spring about how motivated and how excited he was, but like we know that just wanting to be here is not good enough to like, I, I mean, maybe it is right with Lennon Gibson, but like, I'm pretty sure that's not like the, uh, the requirement for being a good player. So I, um, yeah, I, I hope he's he's better. Um, I'm not putting a lot of stock in it right now, though. It's just like I, I hope it's going to say sound bad. I, I hope people don't take it the wrong way when I say this, but I, I hope he's like injured and there's like a reason for this, like a physical reason for him not being like at his best. So like because then you can recover, right? Then you can get better and like he'll be at 100 percent at some point. But like if this is just who he's going to be for the rest of his career, that's not a great look. And I hope that he just turns it around soon. He's a streaky hitter, but he's been on the wrong side of that streak for a little bit too long. Yeah. Uh, so where would you put one to 10? I think I said around a six, just like Sandy. I feel okay. like if it <clears throat> keeps going, if he's like, if he's like still a replacement level player for the next month, then I'm going to be really concerned. But if he starts turning it around, then that's going to be good. So I would put myself at a five, but I think my tune's a little bit different than you guys. I'm concerned, but I'm not. I, I think I'm like going to be stuck at a five for a little while um, because so April last year, he struggled big time. Yeah. May, June, July, he had like a 130, 150 and 140 WRC plus. So he was really good. Yeah. Then August and September was bad. His back is it that I'm actually that different than you, Andrew. I hope it's not a physical thing because if it is a physical thing, it probably means it's his back. And that's something that might just linger for the rest of his career. And I think he's, it's more, and, and not saying I'm right on that, but I'm saying I think it's more likely he could get out of like a weird funk or a mechanical okay. thing or a swing thing or a mental thing than he can to get over the back issues. And if you're thinking about a guy who maybe is like getting impacted by injury, you would think the power would go away, which is something that you both have referenced. His swings don't look super comfortable. The defense is something that starts to fade when that happens. Although the second half defensively, he was better than the first half. I I am, I'm getting a little bit worried and I do, but I partially think it's a little bit too soon I know that you have the sample size of 2023 to bring up, but I do think it's a new year and old Nolan Arnado has always been a streaky hitter. And so for that part, I'm not super concerned yet. I think if you give me middle of May and it's not any better then I'm going to start maybe raising my eyebrows pretty like to the, the seven range, but it's just, he's the kind of guy that can look so, so bad. Even when he's swinging well, he makes those really dumb swings that are like, yes. dude, what are you doing? Like people have been like, why is he doing that? I'm like, have you watched Nolan Arnado since he's been in St. Louis? He's the king of the weird check swing thing that I do not understand, but it has happened more frequently right now. And obviously he's not producing when he's hitting the ball. So I get that. But overall, I'm not freaking out yet. But I do think it's really interesting. You go back to last July and there was those rumors that the Dodgers wanted to trade for him. 
The St. Louis people kept shooting it down that it wasn't happening, but there's LA people who do claim that conversations at least did happen and that it didn't get to the point of exchanging names, but they at least talked. A Dodgers guy came out again recently and just said, yes, that happened, and the Cardinals asked for Bobby Miller, and the Dodgers shut it down. I do think it's interesting to go back and think, like, what if there was a Bobby Miller trade potentially? And I'm definitely not going to say that should have happened right now, but that could be, like, one of those, uh, uh, gosh, I forget what Bill Simmons has a thing on it, like looking uh, glass door moments where you look back, you're like, oh, you should have done that. Um, that yeah. could be a moment you go back. And it's like the Dodgers almost maybe could have saved you by taking out his contract from you, giving you some young pitching and go through there. That is a way overreaction for me right now. I'm not going to say that's my take, but like that, I feel like that's something that you asked me last July and I thought it was crazy, but in, and I'm not even saying from a standpoint, the Cardinals need to rebuild. I feel like that's what most people say for Nolan Arenado trades. Like, Oh, they need to rebuild trade Nolan Arenado. Nolan Arenado. They might have needed to trade Nolan Arenado just because he's not going to be good anymore. I, again, don't think that's happening. Yeah, I mean, but. I would I would take Bobby Miller right now. Like, I would I would not say no to that. Um, he looked really good, um, and he's probably going to oh, be really yeah, good. Yeah, right now, team. you if you up that, I'm saying, like, to go back, like, I don't want to say that was so clearly a wrong decision. It's um, fair. And I think it is tough. Like, like it, in theory, Bobby Miller is the best. I mean, he's younger, cheaper, and he's like looking like an ace right now. But it is Nolan Arenado, and it's like yeah. if you had traded him last off se- last off season, I don't know what happens with this team. Like, I don't think you can necessarily sell Paul Goldschmidt in this team that you're a contender right now. But I don't know. I'm not gonna. I don't want to be the guy who's like they should have traded Nolan Arenado because I don't feel that way right now. But it's tough. It's tough. Anything else related to Nolan that we need to talk about? I just want to see him like be productive. <laughs> I'm kind of sick of this. Yeah. No power. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, there's every chance that it's just a slow start. And maybe as he gets older, it'll kind of be the Goldie effect where he just does kind of start slow. And that's just going to be how it goes. Um, I don't really want that to be the truth. I'd love to see Nolan Arnato be able to put together a full 162 and win an MVP. Um but maybe that's where we're at. I know a lot of older players. Oh, blue Sandy. Okay. Yep, I think so. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Keep going. So, uh, yeah, I, I think related to Nolan Arenado, maybe we talk a little bit of injuries. So uh, we do want to shuffle the deck a little bit here. We don't have to do this every single Did you guys segment. lose me? Oh, we got Sandy back. Yeah, we did. But we're going to shuffle the deck. We're just going to oh. transition it from injuries, potential of Nolan Arenado to real injuries that have happened. So on the update path, um, large new bar. And so we, I'll, I'll just break them down real quick that we talk through them. Large new bar is mostly like, they're not worried about his injury anymore. Now they're just worried about his timing at the plate. And so his return is imminent at this point. Sonny gray has had a start pushed back with, uh, his rehab start because of rain. So that keeps happening. So there's a chance that he's, his starts a little bit more delayed now. And that has more to do with make sure he's ramping up properly, but then also they don't throw off the rotation and just randomly insert him in and throw off everyone else's schedule. Um, so that's a thing that's they're kind of looking at right now. Um, Tom Yedman is having another MRI. And at least according to uh, Bernie, there there's a chance this is a season-ending injury at this point. He might need another surgery. And his sources say that either either option that they're looking at right now, both would be potentially season ending. Now, no. that's him. I have not heard that from anyone else. So that, I'm not saying he's wrong, but it's also not gospel right now. So like, let's not go too far out on that. And then Dylan Carlson, it's been talked about potentially a six-week thing. So that you're probably looking at middle of May before Dylan Carlson's back. But serious? I haven't heard a lot more than that if you guys have seen. Like six weeks from when he was down yeah, originally. So yeah. we're already into it. Um, because you also have to have him get into game action, do rehab, all that stuff. But that's um, so yeah, we were, talking about, we were talking about Carlson being back like right after opening day. Like all of all of this is just so frustrating. The Cardinals have gotten worst case scenarios in multiple of these injuries, and they've kind of come out of nowhere. Yeah, not not ideal. But so any anything like Sonny Gray, I'm not super concerned about. Actually, I'm rather than be patient with him than rush him back yeah. and potentially miss a ton of starts. And it's probably about a one start difference, if anything, at this point. Um, the Edmund news is the one I'm that's really sucks. like raising my eyebrows about because I think it kind of starts to explain why Brandon Crawford might be getting a decent amount of appearances because they need to keep him fresh so he like can play in oh. games. 
I don't doesn't mean that. he should be the shortstop on the roster. You could go Jose for me and Thomas and JC. Uh, I don't think Brendan Donovan will be their backup shortstop, but you could do that. Um, <clears throat> but then the I bigger thing for Paul me is, hey, <laughs> oh my gosh, the White Sox have I nothing would. to lose. They might as well. I would him. absolutely rather have Paul DeYoung, a hundred percent, and I'm sure that you could get him for almost nothing. And Paul DeYoung at least yeah. plays good defense and hits for a pretty little bit of power. Thing to do. I'd be fine. I, know, okay. I would celebrate. Do we that need to hold those water here? Yeah, no. Um, I don't know. It's just pick your poison with backup shortstops. Again, we should have signed like Trey Turner or somebody, and we would have been fine. But um, unfortunately, that ship has sailed a long time ago. But like, yeah, I'm not too concerned about um, Edmund and Carlson being out for too long. Um, kind of prepared for it, honestly. Like before the season started, I was like, yeah. Um, Edmund's probably not going to come back anytime soon. And it's Victor Scott's job to run with, and he seems to be doing a pretty nice job of that so far. Um, and if if he keeps – if the league, like, adjusts to him and he he starts to, like, struggle a little bit more or something, Lars Newpar is perfectly capable of, of slotting in at center field um, while those two um, come back. And, yeah, it's, it's not great having Siani as your reserve outfielder. I would much rather have Carlson as that guy, but – like it's not going to win or lose you that many games. Um, and I feel like at the end of the day, you'll get through it. And it's it's not great news, but it's also not like going to end the team. It's a lot better that, that Newbar and Gray are coming back and they're on track. Yeah. That's what's most important because those two guys are very, very important. I totally agree with that because <clears throat> Middleton's important, but he's not that important. Um, sure. Gray is important. New bar is important. Edmund Edmund's interesting to me because I think my ideal scenario is that he comes back and he's the, he's the Swiss army knife off the bench that backs up center field and shortstop and isn't an everyday player anymore. But Victor Scott and Mason Wynn have both superseded him in the lineup. The thing that they Sandy just said in the chat, Edmund could have been a trade chip at yep. the deadline. Now he's um, not. And so that's something that I'm frustrated by because you could have potentially moved him um, to go get pitching um, or maybe it makes you feel a little bit more comfortable to move Thomas to JC or someone like that to go get like an elite starting pitcher if you need to. Like I'm looking at Shane Bieber right now from the Guardians, and he's just been electric to start the year. So like I mean, but at the same time, like I'm sure the Dodgers will want him. I'm sure the Yankees will want him. So it's not like he's going to come cheap, but it would be really nice to have a piece like Edmund to use or Alec Burleson, all this stuff, and it just gives you one less option. So. That's the thing that actually frustrates me more. And it probably means Brandon Crawford's on the roster for a, quite a while. Again, maybe Jose for me and Thomas to JC, maybe it just, they need to make sure he could play enough to make it worth it. So that's yeah. where I kind of pump it. Cause if he's only going to play twice a week, I don't love it's the not. idea of it. Um, so yeah, we'll see with that. And then yeah, great coming back to like Zach Thompson's been the only starter who's looked pretty like actually he recovered a little bit today, but uh, you replace Thompson in the rotation with gray right now. Like that would be really nice to have. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I think the the, the, the worse than modern, though? is he worse who? than he's not worse than modern Crawford. No, no, probably not. I want to hear Sandy two games. He just doesn't like Crawford. I yeah, I just don't like Crawford and Siani. I have like a personal thing against Siani for some reason. I don't really know why. I kind of just made it up this off season. <laughs> I was like tracking every single day he survived on the 40 man when I was like, why is he on this? <laughs> um, oh my God. Yeah. I don't, it's fine. He's, he's better than modern. Like I'm, I'm being dramatic, but I am frustrated because I just, I don't understand the scheduled off days in like game five. What are we doing? Yeah. I saw uh, Jeff Jones tweeted out <clears throat> that Ollie said that for win, it was a combination of two things. One, the mental and physical grind of a full season, which he hasn't had to do before. And so he doesn't want him to get burnt out by the middle of the season. So like, yes, he can handle it now, but he's worried that July, August comes and maybe he's in a funk mentally and physically. Again, I don't agree with it, but I, at least the reason, like sometimes there just doesn't feel like there's any reasoning to something. At yeah. least he gave some. And then the second part was the Crawford needs to be fra Like they need him to be in a rhythm. So when he does come in, he doesn't look terrible. He has looked terrible so far. So not necessarily changing it, but hopefully it does over time. Um, yeah, let's, let's wrap this up with our, our I feel like we're going to do this every episode. I love this segment call razor fold. Every time we do this again, dealing the cards here, we're going to give a take and the other two have to call. So we agree, raise and kind of go even further out on the limb here or fold on our takes here. 
Do either of you have a take you want to start off with? Yeah, I've got one. Okay. Um, I, I'll say call Razor Fold. Wilson Contreras has made real defensive strides, and he's done it at it, this year, like late in his career. Whatever they've done has worked, and he is now like at least a league average catcher. Sandy, if you get one of your joke Boulder predictions right that we did for April Fools with Contreras winning a gold glove and you don't get a single one of your bold predictions right, I feel like that would be really funny. And there goes my lights. That would be funny. Um, um, all Jeff Taxes and Andrew's light coming off. Andrew's oh light's my, my connection. That's hilarious. I, I will call that. He has cl- – I mean, it just like so far, everything show everything to this point – has shown he's made strides. He's been complimented for his pitch or for his game day prep in terms of prepping the pitchers. So I think that's a good thing. And then obviously the framing looks so much better right now. Um, So will last again, it's small sample size, but I think it looks pretty good right now. And that could really help this pitching staff out. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Um, I'll call. I feel like it's going to be, Interesting to see how he progresses. Um, I think he, he looks a lot better defensively than Herrera right now, which is good or bad. I don't really know. I feel like Herrera, if his bat comes along, you'll have a really good um, catching duo and Herrera right on cue um, with a single, hopefully. Maybe. No, yes. he's not going to second. Um, but <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I feel like I've liked a lot of what I've seen behind the plate. Seems like they're not going to blame him for the pitching being bad this year. Um, so that's that's a good thing. Um, a lot less turmoil with the catching position. Um, and, yeah, I'm really excited to see what he, if he can keep it up. And Brendan Crawford is batting with the game on the line. This is amazing. We didn't pinch it for him. What are we doing? There, there, there's a guy named Mason Wynn on the bench who's better than him. I yeah, I mean, Ollie. There's a guy not, Alec not, Burles off the bench who was, could actually hit a home run. You know, like that's true, just, and that would give you the lead right now. Yeah, this is this this is hilarious. Crawford yeah. getting the hit in the ninth with the game on the line is honestly so funny. Although if he draws the walk here, I'll be happy. Yeah, um, I'll give my take as I think the Cardinals will sweep the Marlins and go into the Philly series looking like a really competitive team. Um, a team that I think you'll start to hear, like you might get those MLB network segments where it's like, were we wrong about the Cardinals? And they're like, look at the veterans on the team producing. And it's like a weird segment of like the 35 plus year olds who are make it doing work. And it's Andrew Kittridge and it's Lynn and it's Gibson. And it's like, okay, whatever. Um, but I really like this team right now. Um, <clears throat> I honestly, it's just what my expectations were, what I thought this team would be. So I'm not like, surprised necessarily by it but i i am surprised that they're starting off or maybe i'm I'm just excited that they started off well but i think this is who they are um de- a team that cannot compete with the los angeles dodgers probably can't compete with the atlanta braves um texas rangers are a better team than them stuff like that but like when you get to the diamondbacks of the world when you get to the phillies of the world i'm not necessarily saying they're a better team but they're in the same class and i think they're a team that will win the nl central and make the playoffs um and then hopefully at the deadline there's a lot more that does too so um yeah that would be my let me get yes. brandon crawford got on base yeah he drew oh a my walk. gosh he drew a walk okay i need to pull this back up it was now like burleson, it was now burleson is, is pinch hitting for for jordan wait what oh that's dear. fine that's oh. fine no walker's been really cold i don't actually hate this move that much and walker has not been able to handle pitches on the outer half of the plate and it's resulted in a lot of strikeouts in the early going. So I don't. Really Apparently, Jordan Walker made a face when uh, Aldi pinch hit for him. So I need to see that. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, but know. like, why? Why are we pinch hitting Burleson for Jordan Walker and not Brandon Crawford? Like, you got the walk with Crawford, but like, what? Like, yeah, come on. I agree with let's, that. Let's do better. Yeah, I think they're trying to say the lefty righty matchup there. I'm not not defending it, but I'm just saying like Crawford the lefty righty matchup, but. Wait. Oh, pinch runner win. Okay, that's nice. Win pinch running for Crawford, though, on first is interesting when you still have Herrera, who has very little speed on second, and yeah. Contreras could shift to catcher if you needed to. Yeah, that's true. I'd be trying to play for the tie right now. It looks like Ali's playing a little aggressively and trying to get the win. Yeah, because I guess if you did that, you can move 
you could move Carre- or Contreras to catcher, and then you move Win to shortstop, and you take out Croft. Wait, can you take out Crawford? No. Yes. So where were Crawford? Yes, we can always find a way to take out Crawford. I'm well, trying to think. There's if a way. Switch. If if Contreras came into the game, Donovan shifts. And I believe and then defensive replacement. No, then your pitcher just bats, which is cool. We like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think who stays in defensively, though. Imagine if you had a pitcher who could bat. Oh gosh. Anyway. Don't. Anyways. Bring that up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, uh, I Andrew, you gotta you gotta take you want to give for the for the upcoming series, or just or just in general. Oh, yeah, series. Um, or, or just in general, because Sandy's was more in general with the Wilson right. Chairs. Man. Also, do you I guys call raising a pullout? You thinking the sweep in? I don't know how you raise a sweep, but you could you could try if I'll, you want to. I'll call. I, I, I'm with you. I agree. It's hard to sweep a team. Like I, I know the Marlins have looked terrible, and they got swept by the Pirates, and they got swept by the Angels. But like, it's really hard to sweep a team. So I'll, I'll conservatively fold that. Okay. Well, like, I don't want to be the one who's always like I get a lot of flack for for being negative or whatever. So people have said that. But oh, dang, I feel like sweeping a team in three games is, is really tough. Yeah, it's true. I don't think you're, I don't think you're being negative for saying you're not banking oh. on a sweep. So right, but yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. For my hot take, I feel like this lineup. Uh, I guess yeah. That mine was going to be a little negative anyway, so we'll get some folds maybe. But I feel like this lineup is not going to be as good as we hyped it up to be at the start of the season. I just like we had um a lot of high hopes but we were kind of banking on goldschmidt and arnado both being like having rebounds they kind of look like the hitters that they were last year arnado especially has looked really really bad um and i feel like the hitters who we expect to take a step forward we haven't seen lars newbar yet obviously that could change a lot of things if he looks really really good but i feel like we haven't i haven't seen enough to expect that jordan walker is going to take that huge jump that nolan gorman is going to take a huge jump that brendan donovan He's looked good, but I, I don't expect him to take like a huge jump from last season. So I feel like that um, the lineup might be a little bit of an issue and they might need to patch some of that at the deadline as well. And the pitching might actually be a little bit more stable because they spent a lot of um, effort. They, they put a lot of effort into to repairing that this offseason. And um, when Sonny Gray comes back, the pitching, which has been the strong suit of this team um, throughout the series, it might actually hold up. Um, what can you, uh, just for a second, tell me what you think expectations lineup are like, even just like a general, like ranking of the lineup or off, like I something like top that. Five, I have top seven team in the national league. I feel like they will be closer to like league average. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the, the rotation will be closer to league average oh. instead of being like bad, you know? Yeah. I'm folding that. Um, <clears throat> cause I think they're definitely a top 10 offense in baseball. Um, I, they might not be performing it like right now, but I think that's what they'll be this year. And then the ceiling of the top five. Um, but that's looking less and less likely with Ellen Nolan or not and Paul Goldschmidt not necessarily being super great. Um, but again, it is pretty early, so I'm not going to freak out too much. And also, like, like you said earlier, only Contreras and Donovan have a over 500 OPS right now, and that's not going to last. So I think as you start seeing guys perform 20 to 3 better than they are right now, this lineup gets a lot better. So, um <clears throat> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited going into this Marlins series. I feel like the team looks better right now. We feel better about it. You got curbs on by the Dodgers, but it looks way more like the Dodgers are just so good and the Cardinals are not that good than it does that the Cardinals are really bad. Um, we'll obviously have more to say about the series or the upcoming series of the Marlins and how they're coming into the Diamondbacks coming up soon. Um, not sure if we'll learn a lot about the Cardinals after the series unless they lay an egg, but at the very least, it hopefully gets them some wins and puts them in a really good position compared to what they started off this week at, one and three. Um, any lasting takes or anything you guys want to say on the way out? I think we have an exciting uh, announcement for episode 100, right, Sandy? Do you want to drop that? Yeah, yeah, we do. Andrew, you take it. Oh, that, that's all you, man. It's all you. Which Which one are we referring to here? <laughs> what? Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about the, okay. Well, um, if you guys want to join our team um, and h- come make content with us, we're going to be um, expanding a little bit, uh, looking to other sports in, in the St. Louis area. If you want to cover the hockey, cover the blues for us, 
or cover uh, St. Louis SC with with the MLS. Um, we're going to have an application going up on our Twitter, um, and we'll um, evaluate some candidates, look into you, um, and give you guys an opportunity to help us make some content. And it'll be a really great opportunity. Um, we already have a name for our our Blues podcast that we're going to hopefully start up soon. Sandy, do you want to do you want to drop that? Yeah, it'll be called Note News. So a fun little tribute to <laughs> Newt News. Oh, the Cardinals just lost. Dang it. Victor uh, Scott strikes out swinging. Rough game from the Cardinals. 3-2 loss. Um, back to what we're talking about now. It'll be called Note News. It's a fun tribute to Newt News. And uh, I just would highly encourage anybody who's interested to apply. It's seriously a ton of fun to make content. Um, I remember when Andrew and I were talking about starting Newt News in the first place. I had my my questions, my doubts about what it would look like. And I'm really glad I took a chance and we did this because it's been super fun. It's been a great opportunity. We've met really cool people. Obviously, we met Josh through this, which is awesome. Uh, it's just been a ton of fun. It's something that now is like one of the best parts of my week, you know, making these episodes and getting to do this content. So if you're at all considering it, if you think uh, it's something you might be good at, you know, uh, give our application a look and really think about it. Yeah, I think part of the advantage of potentially jumping on with us is that we obviously have built a little bit of a following here and have some structure and some Andrew's done a really good job with branding and also has really set us up well to put episodes out in a really well in a really a really high quality, but then also like not have to get super into the weeds of editing and stuff through our stream yard and stuff. So there's some different stuff that you'll have access to that you wouldn't necessarily have if you just jumped on your own. Um, and so, and we can also help you with some networking stuff too. So that, that's a, that's a fun perk of it. Um, and then you can see in the application, like, what are the things that we're looking for in a potential candidate? But seriously, I would at least encourage if you're thinking about it all to look at it and to figure out that's something you want to consider and have a conversation with us just because you apply doesn't mean you're signing up to do it. And that doesn't mean we're necessarily signing up for you to do it. Um, uh, but we wanted to open this up because we know that sometimes all you have to do is take a chance. That's what I did. I had people take a chance on me with writing and it's been awesome. You two took a chance at the podcast. Andrew, is there anything that you would specifically say or things that we're looking for or thinking about in a potential candidate? Yeah, just anyone who's excited um, to make content for us. Um, really, we're not expecting anything out of our applicants or anybody who we expect to like do it. We were terrible at it. Go back, watch episode one. It was not good. Josh, you can make fun of us. Um, <laughs> But like, um, it, it really like we were not good at this when we first started. We're still trying to get better every every single time we do this. But um, it will be super fun. Um, it's going to be a grind, but we'll help you every step of the way. Um, and that's the benefit of joining on with us is that we've been through it once. We can help you through it again. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll turn into something really exciting. Yeah, yeah who knows? Maybe Battle Hawks is worth talking about. So. A battle pod, a battle battle cast. That'd be pretty fun. I think the most important thing, though, is just passion. Um, So if you have passion for these teams, if it's something that just really gets you going, really gets you excited, like really do consider it. It's also a great outlet for my fandom. It means I'm not, uh, you know, incessantly talking about the Cardinals with other people quite as much either. I have a great outlet to uh, share that. So, yeah, really give it a look. Super fun. Take a chance. Give it a shot. Yeah. So as we close out, obviously this is dealing the card. So if you've enjoyed this episode, enjoy the Cardinals content, subscribe. We'd love for you to be a part of our, or just to continue to see our upcoming episodes. We've got some fun guests on the way. So we're excited for more coverage with this. It's been a fun season so far. And I'm hopeful that I know today it's loss is painful, but at the again, same, same time compared to last year, this has been a lot better of a start. So I'm more excited about yeah. this team than I was this time last year, which is great. Um, again, we're really thankful for everyone who joins in. And then also we haven't talked about this much recently, but we do have a, um, a, um, geez, why am I blanking? Not subscriber, um, membership, a member membership program. program, yeah, membership program on YouTube. So it's easier to find if you go on our YouTube channel and, uh, it says become a member after you subscribe and you can find the tiers there, but we have a discord that's really fun, um, to leak and different guys in here in the chat can speak to that. Um, but then also what you'll see too, Cody, um, but what you'll see is that we also do things for subscriber perks, like watch games together, which is fun. So there's just different ways to interact with us. So check that out if you want to, but otherwise subscribe. If you're listening to audio, subscribe and like where you're, what audio platform you listen on. Uh, we'll be back soon to talk more about the Marlin series, upcoming Diamondback series and all the fun stuff that's going on Cardinal Nation right now. Stay tuned for further coverage, and this is our latest episode of Dealing the Card.